Next thing I want to talk about is core value number nine. Um, core value number nine is appreciate life and those in it with you. Um, this is probably the most, when you just grab the core values and read down to the core values, number nine is probably the one that you go, what a hippie, um, right? It's the, it's the fluffy, fluffy one. And I've actually struggled with this one more than anything else, wondering whether it should be part of, uh, of the set or not. This weekend I went on vacation. Um, Rachel had a conference and I got to play with my kids for three days. And I got to see some friends who are musician friends that we haven't hung out with in a long time. And I got to watch them perform. And, and I was reminded as to why this is so important. Why appreciating life and those in it with you is so important. Um, it's downright healthy, guys. Getting out of town and, and being with family and friends is important. Um, remembering why we work so hard and what we're really trying to, who we're really trying to serve is so important. Um, Rachel was kind of mad at me on the drive up um, Thursday morning about, <laughs> she, was, she was mad enough to say, maybe we should just light this whole thing on fire and, and you should do a career change because you're just not doing what you thought you were setting out to do. And I was confused about that because what that really meant was I've done a bad job of communicating with her um, and, and where we're at. Um, and her point was saying, all you've been doing is, you know, staff development and uh, trainings and, um, and accounting and you're not selling instruments. You're not doing what you really want to do. That's you're doing all this other crap. And she's right. She's, I have been surprised at the amount of, of that work that I've had the opportunity to do here lately. Um, and it's not working with customers. Um, that, that's, that hasn't been um, the focus here lately. Um, and sales have shown it. And, and, and I own that very much. But I've also had a ball doing what I'm doing. It's been hard. It's been a, a, a big uh, opportunity for me to grow. But I've really enjoyed it. Um, when I was up in Utah County, uh, we went and sat and had lunch with um, Brittany and Megan, some very, very dear friends of mine. Um, Rachel has performed and done recitals with them several times. And just getting the opportunity to talk about what they're into and what they're doing, um, what musical uh, endeavors they're, they're in, what they're playing in, was such relief. It was so nice to talk to them and, and figure those things out and to hear about their performances and what that did for them, what that did for their families and what that did for the community. And it was one of those things where I just kind of sat there and felt that warmth growing again of, yeah, this is why we do this. It's to give these people the opportunity to go play, to give these people the opportunity to make their families happy and proud of them to give the spirit of the Lord through some of these performances to the community that isn't felt in any other way. And that's really what we're facilitating here. Sure. We're selling instruments and we're setting up accessories and stuff like that. Those things are being used for a much greater purpose. And when we lose sight of that, when I allow myself to lose sight of that, it affects us. And I have done a poor job of paying attention to core value number nine of really appreciating what it is that we get the opportunity to do here. Um, I'm really excited for uh, the Googlers and their vision of what a lesson studio can be. I'm thrilled by it. <laughs> I'm, where I'm at is going, yeah, totally. And I'm so glad that somebody has the passion and energy to go make that happen. And I'm here saying, how do I make this easy for them? How do I help them support them and push them forward instead of, you know, sitting back and going, well, you're going to be in competition with me. Blah, 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 blah. Oh crap. Let's get together and let's figure this out and go do something awesome. Because what we're trying to accomplish here is we're trying to bring this musical community together um, and, and allow the, the musical arts in Southern Utah to grow and flourish and foster. I've been very aware for several years that there are 
great pockets of musicians in this town. They don't play together well. Uh, they just, they just either they haven't known about it, they haven't had a venue to do it, um, or they haven't been led into it yet. And I think we are in a very unique position to lead that group of people uh, into doing some really outstanding, awesome things for for ourselves, for those musicians that are coming up behind us, for the community as a whole. And I think when we lose sight of what we're trying to do and just say, I'm trying to get horns out of the shop, I'm trying to collect on these these darn bills because these punks haven't paid us, or I'm trying to come up with the greatest staff training so it's easier for me to do, <laughs> we lose sight of that. And we need to make sure we take a breath every now and then and come back to what we're doing. What that draws us sometimes is people get confused on the work-life relationship and how do we balance these things? You know, how do I sit on this teeter-totter and keep both up? You know, and one's up or, or one's down and the other one's up or the other one's down um, is, is our general philosophy on this. And that is a wussy concept of balance of life. And it really is a wuss concept. If you don't think that you can be a strong individual and a parent at the same time, you're wrong. If you think you have to wear a particular hat and mantle and be a particular person at work and then go home and shed all of that and become a different person at home, you're wrong. You're living incorrectly. Unfortunately for my family and those around me, I am the same person at home that I am here. Uh, I'm, the, <laughs> I'm the same driven, jerk, goofy, constantly thinking person at home that I am at work. But they know what they're getting. And I'm a pretty good dad. I'm not a great dad, <laughs> but I'm a pretty good dad. Um, this weekend with my kids, dude, I had so much fun. I just loved hanging out with them that much. And it was a good reminder for me on how much better of a man I need to be at home. Uh, and by spending more time there and shutting the stupid computer off when I am at home and, uh, and being there with my wife and being there with my kids. Um, I, I'm, I'm strong. I'm tough. I can get up at five o'clock in the morning and do things when they're still asleep. I can put them to bed and go do things when they're asleep and get that sort of extra time that I do need um, done. And I can man up to that situation. But when I'm on at home and I need to just shut this off, put this on the mantle and uh, go be at home. Uh, so don't fool yourself into thinking that you have to be two different people, uh, one work person and one at home person. You're not living right if you're doing that. And I strongly urge you to, to find a better balance than that. Um, but really take time to appreciate those people that you're around um, and go have fun with them. 